Cakelock is a tendency for identity and access management. Today I will show how to configure it as an authorization server in front of a Spring Cloud Gateway client. First of all, Cakelock is considered as a single sign-on system. This means that multiple clients can delegate the end-user authentication to Cakelock. Let's say I am trying to enter a protected building, where each door gives a personalized experience of leisure, but each door is locked and only opens upon the presentation of a keycard. I can choose whatever a personalized leisure room I want to enter. It's like registering on some different websites. The keycard represents Cakelock. If the door is able to read the keycard, it means that the door is connected to the central server of Cakelock as a trusted client. I need by myself to register on the central server as a regular user to also be known by Cakelock. Finally, when trying to enter a room, a message will be displayed on the door to confirm that's me, what's behind the door and which personal data will be used. If I accept, the room will be able to access some of my personal data to give me a personalized leisure experience. The room, the client, never asked me about my identity. The form on the screen comes from the central server, from Kcloak. The client delegated the authentication to Kcloak. Let's represent this in the real world. I'm still the end user. The doors are the websites which will use some of my personal data to give me a personalized experience. And the key card is my credentials of my account in Kcloak. I've created a user account in Kcloak. This will be my master account, the only account needed for all the websites. Each website must be also registered with Kcloak as trusted clients. A secured ID and secret will be used to trust and authenticate the communication from each client. Finally, the data requested by the websites will be stored in third parties' applications. This data is protected behind Kcloak. If any website wants to access my personal data located on those third applications, Kcloak must trust the website, certify I'm the one which tries to access the data and validate which data will be accessed. Those are called the resource servers. Ok, all of this is based on the already known Earth2 protocol and OpenID Connect. Let's start by creating my Kcloak server. I will use a Docker Compose system. On the first image, I will have a Kcloak instance, and on the second image, I will have the database where a Kcloak can save all its data and configuration. This is the image of the database. Those are the credentials to connect to the database. And this is the name of the database. And now here is the image for the Kcloak instance. First, here is the same information to connect to the database. Then I want to access the Kcloak instance with this host name. I had to add this host name to the ATC host file too, with the localhost address. 
And finally, I've added the credentials to connect to the KCLUG administration console. Let's build those images and take a look to the interface. The first thing I can see is the realm. The realm is like a tenant. It's like a group of clients. It's like the building where were located all the doors to the laser rooms. I will create my own realm to avoid using the master one. Now that I've created my realm, I need to get the URL all the clients will need to call to delegate the authentication. Let's copy this URL for later. I will create now my personal account, my user account. At each user creation, I can indicate some actions, such as completing the profile information, resetting the password, or to verify the email. Before going to the client creation, I will create the scopes needed by the clients to access my resources server. Let's go now with my client. I will also ask for the following authorization flows. Those are the callback URLs that must be trusted by KCLOCK after the authentication is successful. Now I will choose which login form will be displayed when the authentication is delegated to KCLOCK. And finally, I will indicate which scopes are necessary for this client. Let's get now the client security information and go to my client server. Ok, my KCLOCK server is ready. I have now a Spring Boot application as a resource server and a Spring Cloud Gateway application as a client server. My Spring Cloud Gateway needs to access the resource server, but my resource server is protected behind KCLOCK. So I must configure my resource server to validate the authentication tokens against KCLOCK and configure my Spring Cloud Gateway to delegate the authentication to KCLOCK. Here is the endpoint I've copied from the realm settings. This way, the resource server knows how to validate an authentication token. Let's go now with the Spring Gateway.
Here are the client ID and client secret I've copied from my created client. And here is again the endpoint of my realm. Let's start now my two servers and access my protected data. Now I log in with the credentials of my created user. And here are my protected resources. After the login is successful, I can see the active sessions of the user. I can also see the sessions created by my client. The length of the sessions, the way they are created and more can be configured in the settings. Let's make a quick recap. I've created a Kclock instance with a connected database. I've created a realm, which will group all my clients and users. I've created a single user as an end user, which will be used to login into the client's website. I've created the scopes needed by my resource server. I've created my client and obtained the ID and secret. I've indicated to my client which scopes and authorization flows are necessary. Then I've added the Kclock issuer URL to my resource server and client server. And I've also copied the client ID and client secret to my client server. That's all for today. So please click on the thumbs up, leave a comment and see you soon. Bye.